Good morning, everyone. My name is Memo, and whether you have been worshiping with us for a while or just checking out our church for the first time, I am so glad that you have joined our online community today. There's something at our church for children, young adults, grandparents, and everyone in between. So follow our social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out our website to connect with God, connect with others, and connect others with God. We will continue our preaching series, Jesus, on every page today. But before that, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on at Purpose Church. Welcome to Fun in the Sunday. We want to make sure you know that you are invited. If you are watching this and our in-person services are still going on, you may still have time to head over to our campus to enjoy some music and Sundays while joining in fellowship with our Purpose family. Don't forget, there will also be water slides for all the kids to enjoy as well. We love our online church family and always enjoy getting to meet you. This is also a great time to learn about and sign up for our groups designed for each and every one of you. Parents and children, go check out Awana and Purpose Kids. Looking for a small group? Check out Rooted or our support and recovery groups. We also have gatherings for women, men, married couples, young adults, and seniors. So no matter who you are or which age and stage you are, you belong here. You can also find all these groups in the Church Center app. Simply download it and set Purpose Church as your home church to see all that we have to offer to support your journey in faith. I know one of those groups will be just right for you. If you are new or visiting, maybe you have some questions about what we are all about at Purpose Church. Well, we invite you to come back for our welcome lunch on Sunday, October 8th at 1245 p.m. in the Community Terrace. There you will hear from Pastor Glenn, learn about our church, and meet other congregants, pastors, and staff while you enjoy a delicious meal. Kids are also welcome to attend, so come as a family. We can't wait to get to know you. Some of you out there have been coming to Purpose for some time now, and maybe you've done the welcome lunch, gotten a group, met some new people, and you feel like you're ready to take another step in your walk with Jesus, but not sure what that might look like. Some options we have for you include baptisms and child dedications. Our next round of baptisms is coming up on Sunday, October 15th. We also have child dedications taking place on Sunday, October 29th. If you would like to participate in either of these, email info at purposechurch.com to sign up. There are many other ways you can partner with Purpose Church to further God's kingdom. To find these opportunities or to give online, go to purposechurch.com slash give. Before we continue to worship, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you once again for another beautiful day, God. I thank you for our fun and the Sunday, God, where we can come together as a community, Lord, as a family and a body of Christ, not only to worship together, Lord, to hear your word, but to fellowship together, Lord. I pray, God, that you might reach each and every person that is listening to this, Lord, that they might be touched, Lord, that your word might go forth and not return void, Father. Move someone, motivate someone today, God. Fill them with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray, amen. Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you, yes Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Jesus, come on now. And Jesus. 
Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever sing. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. true today, Lord Jesus.
Well, hello and welcome to Purpose Church. Today is a very special day because we're calling it Fun in the Sunday. You're right, summer is almost ending, but we wanna celebrate. And so if you're watching from home and you live close to Purpose Church and it's still Sunday morning, we would love to invite you to come to campus today. If if for health reasons you're staying home, we completely understand that. But if you're able to, we would love to invite you to join us today in person. We're gonna be serving ice cream sundaes for everyone. We've got water slides for the kids. We've got a live DJ and it's gonna be an amazing time of community. And we have lots of other surprises and ways for you to connect at Purpose Church. So come on down and visit us if you are able to. But today we're continuing our year long series, Jesus on every page. And and we find ourselves in the gospels, the four historical accounts of the life of Jesus. We're calling this series, The Jesus Movement. And today we're looking at the gospel of John. Jesus are all in one. Now, back in May, a couple months ago, uh, some of my college roommates and I got together and about once a year, uh, this group of four guys, we get together and we just hang out with each other. And it's an opportunity for us to reconnect. Uh, we all love Jesus. We're, you know, husbands and dads and, and just love the opportunity to, to get together and hang out. And one of our favorite traditions is to play tennis. So we just play a lot of tennis. So on this particular year, a couple months ago, when we gathered, one of my buddies, Sean, said, hey guys, have you heard of the sport pickleball? And I got to be honest with you, I was initially annoyed that he was even suggesting we do anything other than playing tennis. And he said, let's go try out pickleball. And I think I even tried to convince them to just stick with tennis, but he said, I think you might like it. And something happened, you guys. I just got to tell you, something transformed in me. We played pickleball for probably four or five hours for a couple days in a row, and I couldn't get enough of it. And it began this obsession in me. And now it's like a really important part of my life. In fact, we've got some pictures that we're going to show you of, of these. These are like the top photos in my camera roll right now. And I got to tell you, friends, yes, I bought a pickleball paddle. I'm all in. It doesn't matter what age or stage you're in. Pickleball is for everyone. It's an amazing sport. And here's what's crazy is that my experience with pickleball began with just being annoyed by it. And yet my curiosity was piqued enough that now I'm finding myself waking up multiple mornings at 6.30 a.m. to meet a group of people, some I know, some I don't even know, just to play pickleball, the sound of the ball hitting the paddle. It's just beautiful to me. It's incredible. Now, I share that with you Because in the same way, but in obviously a much deeper way, the gospel of John aims to to get our attention. And once the writer of the gospel of John, once he gets our attention, he's gonna use the story of Jesus to draw each one of us in. And then ultimately what happens is when you walk away from reading and encountering Jesus through the gospel of John, your life has been transformed by Jesus. And that's really my prayer for our time together that, that, that as we study the gospel of John, that that the words would get your attention, that that the person of Jesus would draw you in and that he would transform your life. You see, the gospel of John really answers the question, who is Jesus really? Which is a really important question in this moment in history because for some of us, Jesus is unapproachable. We don't think there's any way that we could ever have access to him. Or maybe you've concluded Jesus is insignificant. There's no importance in his life, in your life for him, or or he's absolutely irrelevant and outdated. And yet I think what C.S. Lewis said is true. Christianity, if false, is of no importance. And if true, of infinite importance. The only thing it cannot be is moderately important. And today at the end of our message, you're gonna have an opportunity to make a decision. Is Jesus and the message of Christianity infinitely important to you and in your life? 
But before we go too much farther into John, but before we discover together five reasons that Jesus is worth believing and following from just the first chapter of the gospel of John, I wanna talk about the authorship and the dating of John. John chapter 21, verse 20 says this. Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved, we're gonna come back to that in a minute, was following them. This was the one who had leaned back against Jesus at the supper and had said, Lord, who is going to betray you? Jump to verse 24. This is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. So whoever this disciple whom Jesus loved is, he's the author of this Gospel. Now, this phrase, the disciple whom Jesus loved, shows up five times in the Gospel of John. It's the same disciple who Jesus entrusted his own mother Mary to in chapter 19, verses 25 to 27. As Jesus was going to die on the cross, he entrusted his mother in the care of the disciple whom Jesus loved. Now, most scholars believe that it's John, one of the sons of Zebedee, who's named in Mark chapter one, verses 19 to 20. When he had gone a little farther, he, talking about Jesus, saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay, he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Now, this phrase, this title that John uses, the disciple whom Jesus loved, maybe if you're like me, you first read that or hear that and think, was John arrogant? I mean, did did he think he was so much more special than everyone else? I actually don't think that's the case because John will record Jesus saying things like, love others as I have loved you. And the you there is plural. It's like Jesus saying, love others as I have loved all y'all. This is Jesus saying that we're all supposed to love people because he's loved all of us. So the disciple whom Jesus loves surely doesn't think he's the only person Jesus has loved. And so here's three reasons that I believe John referred to himself as the disciple whom Jesus loved. Number one, John was establishing himself as an eyewitness and someone who had a close relationship with Jesus. Number two, John was communicating that he understood his primary identity to be one who was loved by Jesus. And number three, John was intentionally leaving his name out of the story as an act of humility and not wanting to draw attention to himself. Now, when we think more about the authoring and the dating of John, the gospel of John was most likely written in 90 AD by John himself or by a scribe dictating John's words when he was an aged man. John ultimately died around the year 98 AD. And in fact, what's interesting is in the early church, they continued to affirm John, the disciple of Jesus, as the author of the gospel. In in the year 180 AD, Theophilus referred to John as the author of the gospel. In 190 AD, Irenaeus used a hundred quotes from the fourth gospel, mentioning John as the author. And in 200 AD, Clement of Alexandria and Tertullian used John's name frequently in connection with this gospel. Now, what's the purpose of John? He lays it out crystal clear at the end. He he ends his gospel, making it crystal clear what his purpose is. John chapter 20, verse 30. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book but these are written. In other words, John says, I have written this testimony, this historical account, this gospel about Jesus, so that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And I don't know what's going on in your story right now in your life. I don't know all that you've been through or how you perceive or think about Jesus right now. But my prayer is the same as John's prayer that after our time together, you would not only believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God, but that you would choose to give your life to him and you would have life in his name. 
Let's get back to the purpose of John. John's gospel is not always chronological like Luke's, yet it is logical and highly theological. Luke wrote for an individual, Theophilus. Matthew and Mark targeted Jewish audiences with their record of Jesus's life and work. John wrote for the whole world that everyone everywhere, y'all see what we did there? That's our vision as a church. John wrote for the whole world that everyone everywhere would know the love of God through Christ. And the gospel of John, it's a significant book and and people throughout church history have recognized this. In fact, Martin Luther, the great reformer from the 16th century, he said this, John's gospel and St. Paul's epistles, especially that to the Romans and St. Peter's first epistle are the true kernel and marrow of all the New Testament books. They ought properly to be the foremost books and it would be advisable for every Christian to read them first and most and by daily reading to make them as much his own as his daily bread. If you've never begun reading the Bible before, or maybe you're at a stalling point and you're not sure where to go next, I wanna encourage you to pick up the gospel of John, to begin today reading maybe one chapter a day and watch how you meet Jesus. Watch how he transforms your life through his story. And so without further ado, let's look at five reasons Jesus is worth believing and following from the first chapter of John's gospel. Number one, Jesus is our creator. John chapter one, the first few verses. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. When John uses the word, Word, he's referring to Jesus, as we'll see in a few verses in a little bit. But what he's claiming here is a profound truth that Jesus pre existed all things, that Jesus is the creator of the universe. Jesus created it all. And, and, and if you've spent any time in the Bible, this opening in John's gospel should sound familiar to the opening of Genesis, the very first book in the Bible, which says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You see, John is communicating a very profound and important and significant theological truth. And it's this, God created the world and God has a name and his name is Jesus. I don't know what your search, where your search has taken you for God. I don't know if you think of God as an impersonal being, as a distant idea, as a philosophical thought, but the truth is, and one of the reasons Jesus is worth believing and following is that he is a personal God who created all of us. Now, scientists have discovered something that they call the 122 constants. And these are 122 scientific realities that almost point to the miraculous nature of the fact that we can live on planet earth. I see them as almost God's evidence, God's fingerprints that he created this place so perfectly for you and I to be here so that we wouldn't miss him. And and there's 122 of them. I just want to share two of them with you right now. The first one is this. Did you know that on Earth's atmosphere, oxygen takes up about 21% of Earth's atmosphere? But here's what's crazy, is that if Earth's atmosphere had 20% oxygen or had 22% oxygen, that immediately fires would erupt all over planet Earth and none of us and nothing could ever survive. And so up to this point in our service, you've probably taken hundreds, maybe thousands of micro breaths, inhaling and exhaling. Did you know that with each breath that you take in, it's as if God is communicating to you, I have given this to you so that you would know me. But there's more, gravity. You know, gravity is the thing that's holding you down in your seat right now. It's the thing that's allowing you to continue walking. It's the reason we're not floating up in the air wandering. Gravity is what keeps us connected to the ground. Here's what's profound. Did you know that if gravity on planet earth 
was altered by point zero 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 zero. That's thirty seven zeros zero 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 one percent that we would no longer have a sun and nothing on planet earth could survive. And so as you sit down right now, as you walk, as you stay connected to planet earth, except when you're jumping high for those pickleball paddles, okay, you know what I mean, but, but when you're stuck to the ground, did you know that it's evidence for God? Did you know that when you take a deep breath in, when you lay down in your bed, when when you walk around and continue to be sustained, that it's as if God is trying to say to you, I love you so much that I created all of this perfectly for you so that you would believe in me and so that you would have life in me. I love what Sir Francis Bacon said. A little knowledge of science makes a man an atheist, but an in-depth study of science makes him a believer in God. Number two, second reason it's worth believing and following Jesus. Jesus is our identity giver. John chapter one, verse 12 to 13. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. John establishes here really quickly that our ability to become children of God has nothing to do with our performance. It has nothing to do with our qualifications. It has everything to do with Jesus's performance and Jesus's qualifications. He was perfect, he's sinless, he's holy, he's the creator of the universe and Jesus and Jesus alone grants you and I access and the opportunity to be children of God. That's the identity Jesus is offering to you and to me. You see, today, the biggest question of our culture is this. Where's your identity? What's your identity founded in? Where's your worth and value come from? And the temptation could be to think my identity comes from how well I play this game, how, how much money I make, where my family lives, the opportunities I've had. But the reality is our identity is actually rooted in something so much more significant. Number one, every person on planet earth, their, pride, their, their, their first identity is they are an image bearer of God. Every person was created in God's image. This means even the people that annoy you, even the people that you would call your enemies, even your boss who mistreats you, even the people that are so challenging to get along with, they bear God's image. And they may not be doing a great job following him, but they are made in the image of God, which means they deserve dignity and respect. It doesn't come from anything we do. It it doesn't come from our passions or our preferences or our interests. It, It comes from the fact that we're made in God's image. But then for the Christian, for the follower of Jesus, your image bearer status also includes that you are a child of God simply by receiving Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Friends, our identity and purpose don't come from within. They don't come from our culture, but from an unbreakable connection with Jesus. And I think in your heart, in your life somewhere, you're longing to feel that sense of security, that sense of belonging, that sense of a deeper understanding of who you really are. And all of us face the temptation to spend our lives usually accumulating a lot of regret and pain, trying to place our identities in all the wrong things. When the gospel of John says, if you'll receive Jesus and all that he did for you and understand that he's the Lord of your life, you become a child of God and you settle into that identity and and begin living from that instead of looking for it elsewhere. You see, this is really significant. And and all throughout the Bible, you'll you'll see passages where God reminds us of our identity 
and then connects us to our purpose. You see, our purpose should always flow out of our identity. And the problem is for a lot of us, our purposes are flowing from broken identities. Look what Jesus just said. And look what happened in in Mark chapter three, verse 13 to 14. Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him those he wanted and they came to him. He's talking about his disciples. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. Do you see what happened there, friends? Jesus, Jesus was saying to them, before you go and do anything for me, I want you to come and be with me. And for some of us that are, that are achievers, that are type A people, that, that love to-do lists, love accomplishing things, sometimes we can fall into the trap of performing and doing things with the, with the identity, with the b- broken, faulty identity that tells us we have to earn God's love. And so we do the things we do trying to earn God's love. But Jesus wants to say to every single one of us, hold on, hold on, hold on. Of course, I want you to go and share the good news. Of course, I want you to go and tell people about me, but it's got to start from a place of being with me. In fact, it is just as much a priority to Jesus that you would be with him as you would go and share him. And as somebody who works at the church, as somebody who serves, this is a hard one for me. Because I focus a lot on wanting to go and share Jesus. And I think that's a part of our calling. But I've had to remind myself that it is just as much a priority to Jesus that I would be with him. Because if I don't prioritize time with Jesus, I won't have a lot to share with others. That my cup will be so empty that I will actually have nothing to share with others. But if I remember that it is a priority to Jesus, why should you spend time in God's word? Because it's a priority to Jesus to turn off your phone, to remove some distractions so you can be close with Jesus. It's a priority for him. And then it's his priority that you would go and share him with your neighbors, your friends, your family, and the whole world. Number three, the third reason that Jesus is worth believing and following, Jesus is our God with us. John chapter one, the next verses, verses 14 to 18. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. That's John's way of saying, we're talking about Jesus. The word is is Jesus. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only son who came from the father full of grace and truth. John, he's talking about John the Baptist, testified concerning him. He cried out saying, this is the one, Jesus, the one I spoke about when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I feel like John's like a, like a Riddler right there, right? Like I read that, I'm like, well, okay, okay, we'll, we'll unpack it. Out of his fullness, we have all received grace in place of grace already given. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, but the one and only son who is himself God and is in closest relationship with the father. He has made him known. John says, man, before you go any farther, before I begin to tell you any stories of what Jesus said and what Jesus did, you need to understand Jesus is God and he's God with us. He chose to make his dwelling among us. Jesus left heaven with the father to come to planet earth, to be with you, to be with me, to show us the way to live and ultimately to die on the cross and rise from the dead so we could be forgiven and we could have life in him. This was his plan from the beginning. It's like John is saying this. If you want a clear picture of God, simply look to Jesus. I want to say that to you again. If you're looking for God, if you want a clear picture of what God is like, who God is, simply look to Jesus. But you see this idea, the incarnation of Christ, the the fact that Jesus was present with us, it has profound implications for not only our relationship with God and understanding that he came to us, but 
it has a lot of implications for our relationships with others. God's choice to be present with us shapes how we choose to be present with others. And this affects our marriages, our friendships, our relationships, the people we go to school with, the life groups and ministries we're a part of it. It impacts our parenting. A couple months ago, I was driving in the car, listening to a podcast with the son of a really well-known pastor who ultimately passed away. The son was being interviewed on what his relationship with his dad was like. And he talked about how as a child, he loved being close to his dad. He loved just touching his dad and knowing his dad. But the reality is as a kid, his dad wasn't very present. And the beautiful part of the story is that that relationship got redeemed much later in life. And, and maybe even as I'm sharing this, I'm just sensing in this moment that maybe that's been part of your story, that, that the way you parented your kids, you were not very present, not very engaged and, and you've thought all is lost. Well, I wanna encourage you to continue to pray that there's still time, there's still an opportunity. But what I thought, what impacted me the most is as this son was describing his father not being present in his life. I just sensed the Holy Spirit impressing something on me. And I, I didn't hear like an audible voice, but it, I just sensed in that car that, that, that the Holy Spirit was saying something really loud, really slowly, and it was really heavy on my heart. And it was simply this word, stay, stay. And I continue to sense and, and feel this, this word stay getting louder and slower and heavier. And it was as if the Holy Spirit was reminding me when it comes to your relationships with your kids, when it comes to your relationship with your wife, when it comes to your relationships with your friends, instead of looking for the next thing, instead of being so quickly distracted or, or easily moving on or, or becoming impatient, which all of those things I, I wish I didn't struggle with, but I do. It was as if the Holy Spirit was reminding me, stay because I stayed in Christ for you. You see, Jesus is presence in my life, it radically transforms and impacts my desire to be present and connected with the people around me. Number four, the, the fourth reason from the first chapter of John's gospel for believing and following Jesus would be that Jesus is our savior. He's not just an example. He's not just a friend. He's not just a teacher. He's not just an interesting historical figure. Jesus is our savior. Look at what the author John says in John chapter one, verse 29. The next day, John saw Jesus. This John is John the Baptist. The next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming toward him and said, look, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Do you see how he kind of re went back to that and kind of clarified? He said, this is who I was talking about. Jesus is the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Because Jesus was the only qualified one. He, he's the only perfect person who's ever lived. He was the only one suitable for the task of exchanging my sin for his righteousness. And John, he, in John chapter 10, verse 10, he talks about the impact. Jesus, he quotes Jesus, who talks about the impact of Jesus being our savior and of following and having life in him. And here's what's available to you and I when we surrender our lives to Jesus. John chapter 10, verse 10, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. But Jesus is begging and pleading with you to know that he says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is what Jesus wants to offer you. What does it look like to have life to the full in Jesus? I think one way is to step into community, to, to become a part of a community 
where you can be encouraged, where you can be challenged, where you can grow in your faith. And as we begin this new school year, I need all of you to know whether you join us only online or, or, or you're a part of our physical community, our in-person community here at Purpose Church, that it is your opportunity, your role, your invitation to take a next step. Did you know that, that if, if you've got little ones, maybe you've got little kids that, that on Sundays and Wednesdays, we have amazing kids ministry programs here on our campus. We have Awana that's beginning on Wednesday nights. My kids are a part of Awana and they love it. Jesus has transformed their lives as, they, as, as my kids have memorized God's word, but they've also connected with other Christians and other people, uh, other kiddos who are exploring Jesus and, and amazing adult leaders who are pouring into their lives. Lives. Or maybe you have a junior high or a high school student that on Wednesday nights, we have life groups for junior hires all the way up through high schoolers with adults who wanna pour into their lives. These are fun and safe environments where they can grow and have a great time learning more about Jesus and connecting with each other. Maybe you're a young adult. Well, on September 14th, we are launching our young adult nights again for the fall. And we've got an amazing schedule for you. We've got young adult life groups we wanna invite you to be a part of. If you're an adult in any age or stage, we have rooted groups to help you explore who Jesus is and what it means to follow him. We have life groups that you could jump in on. We have celebrate recovery. If you're needing some support or you've got a hurt habit or hang up, we have so many ministries here at Purpose Church that are inviting you to come and take a step into community. And I promise you that if you're willing to do that, you're gonna experience this life to the full that Jesus talked about. And so I wanna encourage you right now that if you're not already involved in one of our ministries, this is a great time to jump in. Everything is starting back up. This is a great time for you to do that. And, and all you'd have to do is just go to purposechurch.com slash next steps. It's gonna be in the description, wherever you're watching this from, you can click on it there or you can just type in your browser, purposechurch.com slash next steps. Let us know what next steps you wanna take or what ministries you're interested in and we will reach out to you and help you get connected. And number five, number five, the fifth reason Jesus is worth believing and following is Jesus is our purpose. John chapter one, verse 35 to 42. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, look, the lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? <laughs> well, that's just kind of funny, right? What do you want? And, and they said, rabbi, which means teacher. Where are you staying? They, they want to spend time with him. Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did, the very first thing after encountering Jesus was to find his brother Simon or Peter and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which means, which when translated is Peter. You see, it was the natural next step for Andrew after encountering Jesus to embrace his purpose to introduce his brother to Jesus. You see, this is what we're all about here at Purpose Church. We, we use the Greek word oikos, which means household. It's the, it's the eight to 15 people that are in your sphere of influence. It's the friends and neighbors, the coworkers, the people that are in your community. If you're a follower of Jesus, his invitation to you is to go and help others find and follow Jesus like you have found and like you are following Jesus. But sometimes that's hard. Sometimes that's difficult and we don't always understand the results, but I heard this story that I, I just have to share it with you. Lee Strobel, who is best known for writing The Case for Christ, before he believed in Jesus, he was actually a journalist who was also an atheist. 
And early in his career, he was so tired, so sick and tired of Christians talking about Jesus that he set out to disprove Christianity. But along that journey, as he did more and more research, instead of disproving Christianity around every turn and around every piece of evidence, he found more and more reasons to believe that Jesus truly is God, that he did actually die on the cross and rose from the dead, that the Bible is worth believing. And and Lee Strobel went from being an atheist to being a follower of Jesus and his whole life was transformed. Now, while he was still a journalist working for a company, he, he was coming up to Easter and he felt the Holy Spirit impress on his heart and, and ask him to go to share with his boss about Jesus, to share the gospel with his boss and, and to invite his boss to Easter services. And, and Lee Strobel was really nervous about this because he knew his boss was an atheist. He knew his boss was against all things Christianity, but it just felt like the Holy Spirit was calling him to do this. So He walks into his boss's office and there's a giant desk in his boss's office and and his boss is sitting behind the desk. And Lee says to his boss, hey, uh, you know, this Sunday is Easter and I wanted to invite you to come and celebrate Easter with us by coming to church with us. And his boss said, you're crazy. That's the most ridiculous thing in the world. I would never come to church. I don't believe in Jesus. And, And Lee pressed a little bit and he said, but, but you got to understand, I think there's great reasons to believe in Jesus Christ. And Lee shared the gospel with him. He shared the evidence for the life and teachings and death and resurrection of Jesus. The evidence for the historical reliability of God's word. And, and yet none of it was penetrating the heart of his boss. His boss continued to say, I will never come to church. I will never believe in Christianity. And, and one last time, Lee said, the services are at this time at this church and, and I'd love for you to come and join us. And his boss said, no, we will not be there. Lee left that office feeling really discouraged and, and a couple of years went by and, and Lee said that he reflected on that story and didn't understand why would God ask him to do this. There was no fruit from it. His boss never gave his life to Christ. He never changed his ways. And then on one Sunday morning, Lee was preaching at a church and and a man came up to him and said, Lee, I need to tell you something. You changed my life. God used you to change my life. And he said, how, What what do you mean? And this man said, do you remember that afternoon that you went into your boss's office at the newspaper company and you invited him to church and you shared the gospel with him? And and Lee thought to himself, yeah, I remember that, but it it was just me and my boss there. Well, the man said, actually, I was in the room. You, You couldn't see me because I was behind the desk working on the tiling floors of your boss's office. You couldn't see me, but as you were sharing, my my heart was beating and I I sensed there was some truth in what you were sharing. I had never heard it before. And and when I got home, I told my wife, we need to go to this Easter service at this church. And and we went to church that Sunday and, and me and my whole family, we surrendered our lives to Jesus and we're all following him today. And I just wanted to say, thank you. You see, I love that story because it reminds us that our job is to be obedient, to follow the Holy Spirit's leading, to take that next step that when we encounter Jesus, to share him with everyone we know. And then we got to trust the results to God. You see, friends, John chapter one makes it clear that Jesus is our all in one. He's our creator, our identity giver. He's God with us. He's our savior and he's our purpose. But the most important question is actually this. Is Jesus your all in one? Is Jesus your all in one? I wanna go back to where we started. John chapter 20, verse 31. He says, this is the reason I wrote all of this, that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. You may have stumbled upon this video online somewhere. Somebody may have shared this link with you because they love you and they love Jesus and they want you to love Jesus. I don't know what drew you in here today, but I know this, that Jesus wants you to believe in him and have life in Christ. And so if you've never taken that first step yet, 
If you've never begun that first step, that relationship with Jesus, I wanna invite you to pray this simple prayer with me. And don't, don't get this mixed up. This is not about saying some special prayer and then going on with your life with there being no difference. No, no, this is a prayer about inviting Jesus to be the Lord of your life today and for every day here on out. But maybe today is significant for you because today you're ready to make the decision to follow Jesus, to believe in him, to make him the Lord of your life. And I wanna invite you from wherever you're at right now to pray this prayer with me out loud. Jesus, I recognize that my sin is getting in the way. I believe that you died on the cross to forgive me. I trust that you rose from the dead, proving you are God. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. Today and every day, I choose to follow you. If you prayed that prayer, or if you're interested in getting more connected at Purpose Church, we want to hear from you. In fact, I just read a card a couple weeks ago from a woman who was watching online who chose to surrender her life to Jesus we want to come alongside you. And so would you go to purposechurch.com slash next steps, fill out that card. Let us know that you said yes to Jesus or that you want to take a next step in following Jesus. And we are going to reach out to you, come alongside you and help you in that journey. Hi everyone. My name is Claire and I am the high school ministries associate pastor here at Purpose Church. And I want to thank you again for joining our online community. Don't forget to visit our website, follow our social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And make sure to click the bell icon to receive notifications throughout the week. I hope to see you in person or here online again soon.